Well, glory to God. Amen. Welcome back. Glory to God to our second part series on the eye of the Lord, on the eye of the Lord. And I hope that many of you, glory to God, got a chance to see our first part series on that. And uh, like I said in the beginning that Pastor and I, amen, we decided that we will give something that would be a blessing in this pandemic and that we will put our trust in the Lord. And so, again, I just wanted to thank God, amen, for my pastor, amen, hallelujah, allow me, hallelujah, to stand in the gap, glory to God. And, I, and what I have learned, I'm telling you right now, I learned it from him. I learned it from him. And so I, I definitely want to make sure that I, that, you know, a lot of people, uh, ministers don't like to sit up on a, a pastor and learn. But I thank God since pastors have been here that I have grown, glory to God, have grown in my holy boldness, and I have grown, glory to God, in the word that he's been teaching me. And so I just, I just thank God for him, amen, because God sent him here at a time period when I didn't even know which direction is to go. So I just want to give that little testimony, amen, because of the fact remain that, um, he has been a blessing to me, has been a blessing to you, all of us in the New Jerusalem. Amen. He is our covering. Glory to God. And so, again, I want to let you know that you, our host now will be back. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Our host will be back. I'm looking forward uh, to co-hosting with him. Amen. But right now, listen, glory to God. Let's get right back into this thing. Amen. Father, we do thank you for another opportunity, Lord God. Hallelujah. To establish your word, God. Your word will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And you said the entrance of the word give it light. It give it understanding even unto the simple. So I do thank you right now. And I pray, Lord God, for everybody that is listening today, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that they will be blessed, Lord God, in their spirit, soul, and their body. And whatever they stand in need of, God, I ask that you grant it by your grace. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Thank God. Amen. Well, listen, we're going to get right back into this thing because of the fact that um, we were talking about the eye of the Lord. The eye of the Lord. And we were talking about the fact that the, the eye of the Lord, he's upon everybody. He makes his sun shine upon the evil and on the good. He sent rain upon the just and the unjust. We established that already in Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 45. Now what we're going to do a shift here. Glory to God. We're going to do a shift here. In 2 Chronicles, I discovered this uh, years ago. In 2 uh, Chronicles now, 16 and 9, it simply says this. Glory to God. He said, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Now, throughout the whole earth, but he do it for a divine purpose. It run to and fro throughout the whole earth. He do it for a divine purpose to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Glory to God. Now, I already established the fact remain that in reverence to Lord. Now, we, we established the fact last week that he have a special way of resting, a special way of blessing people that reverence him, that fear him. OK. He has a special now, when, 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 when we ship down to 2 Chronicles 16 and 9, he says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Same thing in fear. Same way, in fear. He looks at the heart of the person. 
He's not looking at what we say, but he's looking at our consecration and dedication. Okay, so he want to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. If you want God to show himself strong on your behalf, check out your heart. Check out your dedication. Listen, check out your dedication. If, if God is not showing himself strong on your behalf, it's not God's fault. It is a heart issue. It is a heart issue. And he talks about perfect, dedicated, consecrated. That's what God is looking at. He said, man, look at the outer appearance, but God look it at the heart. So he want to show himself strong. So his eyes is looking for you and I so that he can do something on our behalf. Read that in 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. I tell you, it will bless you. So he say he want to show himself strong in behalf of them. Of them. Okay? Bias. God got a right to be biased. Okay? <laughs> to them. Now, if you one of those them, and he, and he know you are, after he examined our hearts, then you become one of the them. But you are not one of the them if your mouth is saying one thing and your heart is saying another. You are not part of the them at that time. And so we cannot fool God. He's a heart inspector. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so God value those who are devoted to him. Yes, he is. He let it rain on the just as well as the unjust now. Okay? He let the sun shine on the good and the bad. But however, though, God value those who are devoted to him. Listen, I'm trying to tell you, it makes a big difference. So we need to check our, our devotion life to God. Are you hearing me? Now, God does this to support and to help such people in whatever danger they may be in. Wow. God values those who are devoted to him. And God does this uh, to support and to help people in whatever danger they may be in, even in afflictions. That's what God does. So, so God looks at the heart of the person and he sees whether or not they consecrated unto him. But he does this to add support to us and to help such people. You need to say, I'm one of those such people because I am devoted to the Lord. You hear what I'm saying? And so whatever danger you in, you ain't got to worry about it. You don't even have to worry about it. I, I, I'm going to tell you this one right now. Glory to God. I'm, I'm adding this for free. And, and listen, I'm going to tell you something. In Psalm 35, I, want, I'm gonna, I might well just give this to you free. Glory to God. In Psalm 35, he talks about whenever time you get in trouble and, and you are in a situation and I want to tell you just the way David, what David did. Glory to God. Uh, he, he talks about in here, he talks about a plea for deliverance and forgiveness. When you read uh, Psalm uh, 25, a plea for deliverance and forgiveness. And then I want you also go over to Psalm 35. Hallelujah. Go to Psalm 35. Uh, now. When you when you when you look at Psalm 25 and then you shift to Psalm 35. <coughs> now, Psalm 35 is one that that I really do use a whole lot. And I learned this when I was working because uh, we, we, we talked about in here. He said that God does this to support and help such people in whatever danger 
they may be in, in affliction. Now, in Psalm 25, but mainly in Psalm 35, I want you to see something here. Now, it says in here, the Lord avenged his people. The Lord would avenge his people. Now, you got to understand something here. David, this is a Psalm of David here. A Psalm of David here. And, and David, David started off, he started off, he said, plead my cause, O Lord, with those who strive with me. Fight against those who fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. David could say that because of the fact remained that his heart was loyal unto the Lord. You ain't got to fight the battle. God said, I would do it, but you need to go and take it to God. He said, take hold of the seal and the buckler and stand up for my help and draw out the spear and stop those who pursue me, says to my soul, I am your salvation. Now, verse 4, 35 or 5 and 4, he says, let those be put to shame and brought to dishonor who seek after my life. Let those be turned back and brought to confusion, who plot my hurt. Listen, he had a right to ask God for this. He said, let them be like chaff before the wind, and let the angels of the Lord chase them. Okay? The angels of the Lord is to chase them. And let their way be dark and slippery. And let the angels of the Lord pursue them. Now, I'm telling him he had a right to ask God for this. He said, for without call, they had hidden a net for me in a pit, which they have dug without call for my life. Let destruction come up on him unexpectedly. And let his net that he has hidden catch his own self. Listen to David. Into that very destruction, let him fall. Listen, and my soul shall be joyful in the Lord, and it shall rejoice in his salvation. Listen, David is saying, look, hallelujah, I've been loyal to you, and you are to support me, and you will help me in whatever danger I'm in. So whatever danger you in, listen, I want you to begin to read Psalm 35, glory to God, at, uh, verses 1 through 9. I'm telling you right now, because God will come to your aid. Are you hearing me? He will come to your aid. But you're going to have a right is to ask God for that if in fact remain that you are dedicated unto him. You are consecrated unto him. You don't have to fight the battle. You hear what I'm saying? You don't have to fight it, but you got a right is to ask God to send forth his angels is to fight on your behalf. You, you know, they, they say you dug one ditch, you better dig two. Well, this is what he said, well, the ditch that they have dug for me, let them fall in it. Are you hearing me? That's what you should actually do. Glory to God. So, so I'm telling you right now, God will fight your battle for you. You don't have to do it. Only thing you and I are supposed to be doing, doing is be loyal and, so, and, and uh, uh, be dedicated unto the Lord. And he will do this on, by, on behalf of me. Glory to God. Now, another thing that God does, God distinguishes between those among him, his people, whose heart is completely and their heart, whose heart is not divided between him and the world. God sees this. You hear what I'm saying? God sees this. So, so God distinguished now between those whose hearts are divided between him and the world. We cannot have a, a divided heart. Glory to God. God says in Matthew 6, 24, say, you cannot serve God and member. You cannot serve 
God and the world. God distinguished that now, not us, but God is the one that distinguished between those things. And so we cannot fool God. His eye is up on us. So God knows whose heart is divided between him and the world. You got to be all consecrated unto God or nothing. Now, sure, God is a merciful God. But sooner or later, God wants us to be totally consecrated unto him. So the eyes of the Lord run to and fro up down the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is consecrated, dedicated, loyal unto him. And you see what you get. You got a right is to ask God for. OK, now another thing that I want to bring in. Now, when we talk about God, I, God, I refer to God's caring love. I could have brought this early in the beginning, but I want to bring it at the end. God, I refer to God's caring love and provincial oversight of our lives. That's what it does. God's I refer to God's caring love. Yes. And he looks at the oversight of our lives. All right. Now. In other words, God is looking to provide for our future. That's what God is doing. He's looking to be careful to provide for our future. That's why God eyes is upon us. That's why God want to direct our steps in the way in which we should go. Because he want our future is to be bright. So God looks down at us. Hallelujah. And so he want us to go in the right direction. But if we decide to go in the wrong direction, then God cannot watch after us and he cannot provide for us. Are you hearing me? Now, one of the things that we discovered in uh, Psalm 33, I read you Psalm 33 and 19, 18 and 19. But in verse 33 of Psalm 19, now he does all of this. He does all of this. In verse 33, he says, lastly, he delivered to deliver us from their, their soul from death. When you read Psalm 33, 19, he's, he does his eyes up on us so he can deliver us, our soul, from death. Now, he can actually do that. He can actually do that. Now, here's the issue. When Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, are you hearing me? When he was raised from the dead, in Revelation 1 and 18, his simple, his simple says this, and then I will read it to you, I'll quote it to you. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the key, glory to God, hallelujah, of hell and death. So God got the power to deliver us from death. You hear me? I want to make sure that I get it right. Glory to God, hallelujah. So, so he says in Revelation 1 and 18, he, he simply tell us this. He said, now this is him talking. This is Jesus talking. He said, I am he who, he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore, amen. And I have the key of hell and of death. Jesus Christ is the one that got the key of hell and death. So what he want to do is he would he want to deliver our souls from death. Now, he have delivered us, all of us that have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. He gave us an opportunity. You hear what I'm saying? So nothing happened without Jesus Christ. He got the key of death and hell. He can allow it or disallow it. You hear what I'm saying? So, so, so he's the one that can deliver my soul from death. 
And you need to understand that in Psalm 33 and 19, he's the one that can deliver your soul from death. You hear what I'm saying? Now, here's another thing here. He mentioned there in, 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 uh, in Psalms, he talks about famine. <clears throat> he talked about famine now. We are in a famine. We are definitely in a famine. And so uh, the world is in a famine. And so we just actually are going through some of the famine, okay? Now, I want to make sure that I cover this famine era because God got his eye upon us, okay? And I'm uh, going right back to Psalm 33. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, so he said he would deliver us from famine. All right? Now, uh, where am I, Holy Ghost? Oh, yeah, glory. Now, he said, okay, so he said, he said, deliver them so from death. Verse 19 said, and to keep them alive in famine, in a pandemic. This is what God is actually doing in Psalm 33 and 19. He keeping us alive in famine. Now, you got to understand that. Now, in famine means that as long as we fear the Lord, honor him, respect him, hope in him, wait for him, and remain in his will, to keep us alive in famine or in a pandemic. We are to fear the Lord, like we discussed already about fearing the Lord. We are to hope in him, keeping us alive in famine. Wait for him for our deliverance and remain in his will and remain in God's will, keeping us alive in famine. You hear what I'm saying? And God will watch over and protect us. He will watch over us and protect us. Now, this verse 19 in here really need to really get a uh, uh, clincher to us in part B. Because he said to deliver their soul from them and to keep them alive in a famine. This is what God is doing. With all the pandemic that is actually going on, I remit to you again that glory to God, I took my, my COVID-19 shots. But I know that God was keeping me alive even during the pandemic. Yes, God is the one that keeping me alive in the pandemic. And you need to recognize that yourself. Hallelujah. So God will watch over us and protect us why? So that we will not die unless it's according to his will or his plan. God will keep us alive and protect us unless, listen, it would be according to God's plan. You know what I'm saying? You hear me quote it all the time in Psalm 118. Verses 17, uh, when I was going through the physical challenge, God told me, he said, you shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. Now, many people know that passage of scripture, but I know it by revelation knowledge. I know it by revelation knowledge. That's how I learned it. Laying on my bed of affliction. God brought that scripture. He spoke that to me. And I didn't even know it was in Psalms, but I guarantee of a truth, it has been written on the table of my heart that God is keeping me alive even in family. Hallelujah. And he said my, my, his plan were that I shall not die, but to live. Hallelujah. That's God's plan. And that's what I've been striving to do since 2018. Glory to God. So, finally, <laughs> finally, now, and finally, in Psalm 17 and verses 8, hallelujah, in Psalm 17 and verses 8, it reads like this. 
It said, keep me as the apple of thy eye and hide me up under the shadow of thy wing. God, keep me as the apple of the eye. Now the pupil, the apple of the eye is the pupil. And you don't, you don't, you want to protect the pupil. You even have eyelids, glory to God, that protects the pupil. You, 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 and so anything that get into the pupil will affect the whole sight. And so you definitely want to make sure that you keep your pupil healthy. So you, we are saying to God, God, keep me as the apple of the eye and hide me up under thy holy, precious, righteous wing. Hide me, God. I know you got your eye on me, but do Psalm 17 and 8 and keep me as an apple of the eye. That's what I want. Glory to God. I want you to do that, God. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to make sure that I am loyal to you. I am loyal to you. And so I, I wanted to just share this with the body of Christ as well as myself because this is my testimony, glory to God, that God got his eye on me. And you need to understand that God got his eye on you. Hallelujah. Listen, so, so my final statement is this. God, you got your eye on us. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You got your eye on us. And I thank you for it. I thank you, Lord. I give you glory and honor, and I praise you, Lord God, hallelujah, for watching over me and keeping me in all of my ways. Hallelujah. Blessing all of us, God, in our going out and our coming in. And I thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, for your word that has been a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. And on behalf of my pastor, glory to God, we thank you for the revelation knowledge. And if anybody is blessed, God, then you get the glory and the honor in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and thank God. Well, listen, glory to God. I, I, I thank God, amen, for this opportunity. Lord God, is to come into the very homes and in, encourage the body of Christ as well as myself. I thank you for my pastor once again. Is entrusted me, Lord God, hallelujah, with the sheep that you entrusted him to. Amen. I thank you, Lord God, and I praise you, and I, and I, I just want to let him know, Lord God, that I love him to eternal life, and I'm going to continue to be obedient to his instruction. Hallelujah. And I'm going to continue to be led, hallelujah, in whatever he say, because one of the things that, that uh, Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, and I'm going to follow my pastor, amen, as he follow Christ. So again, once again, I want to thank God, amen, for you, amen, and our uh, uh, pastor will be back, glory to God, hallelujah, and we're going to be blessed of the Lord by his revelation knowledge. You know he got it, amen. So again, I just want to thank God for you, amen. And for those, again, we ask that you support our media ministry, amen, we're trying to get this together, Glory to God, and you know it required money for equipment and all this, and update and all of this. And so we ask that you would be a blessing to this ministry. And so you will see how you can actually give on the screen as we go off. Glory to God. And so again, I just want to thank God for you. Amen. And just let God keep his eye on you and you keep your eye on God. Nothing, baby. Let's go after the ball, fellas. Let's go nuts.